Hi, and welcome to Something for the Weekend. I'm Jude Gosling, also known as the Artist Jude 90, and I'm Artistic Director of Together 2012, who's bringing you this show today. We're led by disabled artists, and we're based in the main Paralympic host borough of Newham. I'm just getting my... Brendan, who's not able to take his microphone off mute, but still the microphone is with us at the moment. So with me in my studio in East London, where she's been locked down, we've actually lost count, but about a week before lockdown one, we've been locked here ever since and not left. So I'm going to come back to Julie Newman, our chair, the artist and activist in a moment, and we're going to give you some audio description. We're going to tell you what we're dressed up to go out to stay in to do, as if you can't guess. And we'll tell you more about what's in today's show. But first, to the other end of our virtual wheeled sofa, all the way to that well-known part of the East End, the West Midlands, where our co-hosts will join us and tell us, well, audio, describe yourself, introduce yourselves and tell us what you're dressed up to go out to stay in to do. Well, good afternoon. Hi, I'm Robin Sergina, Business Director at Together 2012 uh, and co-host. Um, up here, as uh, Jew said, in Sutton Coalfield in the West Midlands, on a moist afternoon, I think would be the description. Uh, we've had a lot of rain, but it's also really warm. Uh, so when you get to Tracy, she's gonna, she might pass out, I think. So what do I look like today? Well, first of all, I'm sat in front of our uh, theatre curtains. They are beautiful velvet curtains that uh, give us our scene. Uh, what do I look like? I have silvery white uh, hair. I've got no rimmed black armed glasses, blue eyes. I don't know why I'm looking at myself. I do know what I look like. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I am wearing uh, today, I'm wearing a blue polo shirt uh, with a white collar with red cuffs. And when we put those colors together, it is an England football team shirt. Um, as part of my continued celebrations uh, of the Euro 2020 Stroke 21 Championships. Thank you. And I'm Tracy Surgina, and um, I am today wearing a pinky purple bubble hat. My long blonde hair is sticking out at the sides and getting very long now. Um, I've got pale skin, and I'm wearing a blue hockey shirt and it's got a uh, white and red stripes on it and it's got rangers written down across the middle um, and that's for the new york rangers because uh not like in the football i thought i'd watch a hockey match Sounds good to me. And I think you were saying there's a new Disney Channel show on. About yes, so yes. And I'm dressed up to go out to stay in to watch uh, a new series that's come up on the Disney Channel um, about um, with Amelia Estevez in it, who um, is a hockey coach, a well known hockey coach uh, actor not an actual hockey coach um yeah and he brings his team of kids that are you know from nowhere up to a uh, national standard so it's really interesting exciting to watch i'll look out for that i i know we kind of joined the disney channel as one of the sort of alternatives to going out when it became very clear that everything we did was going to be done from home but they introduced something for the adults and i thought isn't it all for the adults so um, yeah <laughs> To check that out this weekend so what do i look like and what am i wearing i have a self-styled hennard corona crop mercifully hidden under a gray trilby i've got pale olive skin i've got green eyes behind black plastic glasses black wrist braces silver colored jewelry and today i'm wearing a black t-shirt that says proud angry and strong 
And I think I've had it about 20 years. I was saying to Robin, it's a relatively recent T-shirt. So I don't know what that says about anything. But it was from the Disability Direct Action Network. And I'm dressed up because July is Disability Pride Month, the Pride Month that you had never heard of. Now, it's only been going for six years. And as with LGBT plus Pride Month, it comes from America but it's rapidly taking off around the world. So Disability Pride Month runs the whole of July and it was set up in 2015 because that was the 25th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act. And that's the act that really came before our Disability Discrimination mm. Act and later our Equality Act. Usually, as you know, well, in fact, always, as you know, we have a festival in Disability History Month, which is November, December. But this is just a wonderful opportunity to do some things over the summer and just feel really proud about who we are and how we've managed over the last however many months it is that we've been stuck indoors or otherwise leading more limited lives than previously. So yeah, Disability Pride Month is something you're going to be hearing much more about through the month. If you go to our Twitter page, which is also embedded in our news stream, there's a link which I'll also put into our highlights and links page with a great article from Samantha Renka explaining Disability Pride Month and why we should all be so proud. So thank you as well for that, Sam. And just to flag up, the highlights and links page is on our website, www www.together2012.org.uk under the Together 2012 TV pull down menu and all of the videos, poems, artwork and in particular links to other things you can do online in the coming week will all be on that page by by say, shall we say, six o'clock this evening. So, Julie, who are you? What do you look like? And what are you dressed up to go out to stay in to do? I wonder... Um, my name's Julie Newman. I'm the chair of Together 2012, and today I'm dressed up to go to Wimbledon. Um, please note the visual aid. <laughs> um, Could you audio describe the visual aids, do you think? Yes, With some was, audio description. I was just about to do that. Uh, this is a, a white, no, it's off-white bag, and in the middle of it, it's got the championships Wimbledon with uh, it's the logo of the uh, Wimbledon tennis or the lawn tennis people there with the crossed rackets on a green background. The writing's in white and it's uh, on the outside. It's got a it's encircled with a purple uh, disc. Um, and I've got a Wimbledon hat on, which is a purple hat with white writing saying Wimbledon. Um, I'm wearing dark rimmed glasses and out from in beneath my Wimbledon hat emerges my flowing locks of gold and silver. I reminded myself when I looked in the monitor just before we came on air, I had a spaniel, I had a Springer spaniel once <laughs> and she had ears somewhat like my hair appears to me. It was a very dear dog, she was a lovely dog. Uh, but with very nice ears, I have to say, but it's very different when it's your hair and you're a person. Um, today I'm wearing a T-shirt, which is actually the NHS one, which says, uh, together, what does it say, Ju? I can't read it. Brave, kind and strong. So you're brave, kind and strong. I'm strong, angry and proud. Or proud, angry and strong, rather. And I've got assorted bits of leather and, and uh, twine on my wrists. Uh, black leather and uh, rainbow, slightly grubby actually, uh, twine, <laughs> twine bracelet. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, so we before are. we all get too bogged down in oh. the audio description, I should just say there's various other things like Wimbledon towels. Also behind us, we have, well, a little bit of our together graffiti banner you can see the whole thing on the website but it's got images of all the different art forms we cover through the year in our free program some of our activities are aimed at disabled people and whoever they want to bring with them everything else is aimed at everybody it's all led by disabled artists and we cover visual arts outdoor art street art carnival art live music video photography 
poetry, filmmaking, and much, much more. And we're going to move on and look at some of those things now. So as I said, we have a program directly for disabled people, which is our clubs program. We run that on the Zoom, but also by phone when it comes to the Pop-Up Poetry Club. And the Pop-Up Poetry Club runs on a Wednesday from 10.30 to 12. We phone you, pay for the call, add you to a group call. People read their own poems that they've written over the week or read poems by other people that they found. We ring off, write some more poems and come back to share them. So, Julie, tell us about this week's poetry group. It was great. It was about stormy weather and it was so interesting because um, two people read the lyrics out for the song Stormy Weather um, and it sounded completely different because they, they read it in a completely different way. And it was just so interesting to hear that that. Um, that difference, really. And how would you feel about reading your poem to start us off with? Go on. Go on, go on. <laughs> really? Mine was underneath the other <laughs> one. Um, yeah, we all wrote poems about stormy weather. I think everybody really got into it, actually, probably because of the recent weather. Um, stormy weather. A gull sits on the chimney, the storms coming in from the sea. The breaking sun struggles while clouds sit heavy, thick and dark. For an instant the world is still, paused, waiting for crashing of the waves to break hard against the shore, flinging stones and foam against the cliffs, waiting, paused, until the moment is lost, forgotten in the sudden onslaught of noise. The sea boils and rears its head, no longer the calm sands, gentle waves flowing in eddies with the tides. Foam flung in force against the walls, make shapes of fearful splendour. Waves reach high, breaking with force against the lonely lighthouse glass. That beacon dims in the contest to shine while the storm rages, in its quest returning Neptune to life. The rain lashes with menace against the sea and the shore, relentless in its destructive sweep of whatever lies in its path. No respecter of life other than its own, created in protest as pressures fought against each other, wind blowing hard, smashes the branches that snap in the onslaught, whirling through the beaten front, cliffs poised, ready to fall. Time becomes meaningless as the storm rages on. Thank you, Julie. I still don't know how you managed to write something every week. Well, in fact, all of you in the Pop-Up Poetry Club, but that was great. What have you got for us, Robin? Okay, I'm going to start uh, with a nice little short one from uh, one of our regular com contributors, Glory Sengo. This is called Stormy Day. When it was a snowy day, I was playing snowball fights in the garden with my next door neighbour, Louise. We were having a cup of tea and biscuits. The rain and wind were pouring badly. Do you know, so often I think there's a, there's about a whole book in there, isn't there? You know, did the snow turn to rain? Was that when did they go inside because it had turned to rain, which it quite often does in London. You know, we have rain, we have snow, you have snow, you continue to have snow, we suddenly have rain. <laughs> so, yeah, I could really see where that was coming from. Tracy, what have you got to read for us? Uh, I've got one by Dawn Barber, Stormy Weather. I'm sitting in a small cafe on the corner of Mark Street. The weather is terrible, rain and wind, even some lightning. I'm drinking a cup of tea. I cannot go home just yet, so I order another one. The rain banging heavy on the windows. A man in a, a man dressed in a mac, soaking wet with his umbrella. What weather? What weather? He says. Yes, terrible, isn't it? I say. But let's let's brave it out because tomorrow the sun may come through and shine. All we can, sorry, all we can do is hope. Oh, thank you for that, Dawn. It's so positive. And, and we often have really positive poems from Dawn. And that's really is what you want to think about, isn't it? You know, have another cup of tea. Don't go out in the rain. Mm. But just assume it's going to pass over tomorrow. So this is Crystal Peasy, also called Stormy Weather. 
I'm talking about stormy weather. Today, there is thunder and lightning. When the rain hits you very hard, it can knock you out. The lightning flashes faster and can be over very quickly. Stormy weather is very dangerous and you can slip over and break your legs and neck. We can see the lightning before we hear the thunder. And I, yeah, I, I really get that with um, Crystal, but it reminded me of it going, oh, this is going back many, many years to being a child. And we had a message to say that my great aunt had been blown over at the bottom of the street. Could we come and get her? Because I live <laughs> Post and the the main shopping street ended at you know ended by the sea, so it got windier and windier as you went down. And when I read that, I thought, well, it sounds a bit extreme, but actually, it's completely true. So, Julie, I think you've got one from our club's program leader, the artist Alison Marchant. Yes, I do. This is by Alison. It's called Storm. Louder and louder, the wind sweeps across the trees, cracking branches. Leaves unlock and drift among thick black clouds. Thunder rolls, a snake of lightning, threatening purple. Dull thunder rumbles along and loudly claps. Wind blows sheets of heavy rain, bowing trees. Wind unrolls, crashing, and long howling carnival of storm, unrested and glorious. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, Alison. What have you got for us next, Robin? I will just bring it down. Yes, it's mine digitally. Mine was at the top. Just going to say when you're saying about it, like it, your your snow turns to rain, as a very quick aside, um, many years ago, Tracy and I went to New York and um, we went to visit the a very tall building. Um, and uh, it was snowing at the top and raining at the bottom it was that tall which brings me nicely on to stormy weather by Dwayne bryan it rains it snows and at times the sun doesn't show british weather is so unpredictable the weather can be dull look outside and it could be raining you look outside and your heart could be draining why is the weather so bad Why is the weather so sad? Why doesn't it sunshine? I guess it's because it's winter time. Bad weather can lay heavy on your mind. Bad weather can make you miserable all the time. Okay, it's winter time. And I guess the sun won't shine. It might be full of snow. It may be full of rain. But I know one thing. Winter still remains. Thank you for that, Wayne. That was a very long, thoughtful poem. And um, yes, I think it, it's funny, isn't it? You know, we've had so much strange weather that it's actually quite easy to think yourself out of the season and back into mm. the winter. So I think you've got one to finish for us, Tracy. I have, yeah. And it's from Tyler Hendel. Stormy weather. Stormy weather beating down, rain pours, hits the ground. Stormy weather, stormy weather, streets are empty, thunder at plenty. Stormy weather, stormy weather, lightning flashes, wind crashes. Stormy weather, stormy weather, skies grumbling, grey clouds hovering. Stormy weather, stormy weather. Oh, thank you, Taylor. So if you'd like to hear those poems again, or rather read them for yourself, they will be up on the highlights and links page by six o'clock, which, like I say, if you go to the Together website, www.together2012.org.uk and click on the Together 2012 TV menu, that's where you'll find highlights and links, recordings of the show and much, much more, including of course information about how to join the pop-up poetry club you don't have to live in east london or even in the uk well actually you probably do have to for the uk just because of the phones but i would have to check whether there was a workaround anybody who considers themselves to be a disabled person is very welcome to join along with anybody you want to bring with you so drop us a line to info at together2012.org.uk if you'd like to join in from home we'd love to read your poems even if we 
you don't want us to show them on air, we would still love to see them. So again, drop us a line, info at together2012.org.uk. Next week's theme is This Makes Me Smile. So there's plenty of scope there. And indeed, we may even be smiling about the football because Robin has been flying the flag from England right since the start of the Euros in the face of, shall we say, a little bit of doubt and lack of interest from the women on the show. But it's all come good. And the show today is going to finish with Robin singing live his song Electricity, which celebrates England and the Euros, but very much from the perspective of the way it's cheered everybody up indeed. So that's a great song. We've had far more views for that on Twitter already than we've had for the show. So we'd like to get some more do share the video with your friends. But now we're going to move on and we're going to have a look at this morning's Together 2012 Art Club. The Art Club runs a still live session on Zoom every Friday. We can also share the still live photo with you via text or email or WhatsApp, whatever is easiest for you. Alison Marchant, who, like I say, is a mid-career international artist in her own right. She runs our programme part-time. So she creates the images, and I'm going to start by putting an image up on screen and getting Robin to audio describe this week's image. Wow. Okay, so the image here, and um, we just have a plain background. Uh, and to me, it actually looks like a bunny. It's a um piece of material of fur it could be it could be a hat i mean i'm sure it's faux fur because it's it looks like a kind of leopard print um so it's kind of a base a, a very light fawny color um with what i would describe as leopard spots on it but at the front of it is a black bow uh held together with by with, with a silver brooch um which is also holding three uh, a collection of feathers some very striking black feathers with white dots and i'd love to know what bird that comes from and then two longer um brown feathers but it, it does kind of give the appearance to me anyway of a rabbit yes it's mm. funny isn't it because i think it very probably is a hat but i'm not sure however if you join the still life session with alison she audio describes the image to start with and it is a very mindful session so i think they're able to focus perhaps a bit more easily than us but there's something really interesting about not knowing exactly what it is and you know, so perhaps she doesn't explain. I don't know. I certainly don't know where she keeps getting all these gorgeous vintage things from. <laughs> so let's have a look at some people's work from this morning. And this is Crystal Peasy, and Crystal's used paint. And I think Crystal's really tried to make it a bit more abstract. So she's taken the different shapes that she can see and she's spread them out with paint, which is actually really effective. This, I think, is Sophia's. Um, unfortunately, there wasn't a very good Zoom connection, but this is in felt tip, and I think a really interesting effort. It's very much kind of taking all these different shapes and different elements and doing them in different ways. And this is, I think it's a pencil and coloured pencil drawing, and this, I believe, is by Lee Brooker. And we're back to the original. So I'm just going to take that off and say thank you very much, Alison, and thank you, Art Club members. Now, the Art Club on a Tuesday is also in force on a month. Yeah, Tuesday. 11 till 12 on Zoom, the art club runs a make and natter session. And you can either join in with what the group are doing or do something entirely different and just show people what you're doing and enjoy the sort of social occasion. In this case, I've just got one thing to show you, which is Crystal Peasy making a pom-pom. And the reason I've put this up 
is that Crystal is making a pom-pom in the way that Tracy showed us last week. So we have a whole page under our Join In From Home program called Join In With Tracy. And Tracy, do you want to just tell us quickly about the pom-pom activity that you put up last week? Yeah, I think um, pom-pom is one of those things that we used to do a lot when we were younger, but then just gets forgotten. And I think there's just so many fun things you can do with a pom-pom. Um, so I've, I've, put, I've put a complete page of instructions on how, from start to finish, on how to make a pom pom, um, and it's really lovely to see that this the pom pom on screen is being done with some browns, yellows, and lilacs and pinks. So I'd be really interested to see how that comes out because it just looks beautiful arrangement of colours. Um, yeah, but pom poms you can use pom pom to everything. I've got pom pom on my hat. Um, you certainly have and in fact Crystal's been pom-poming us with us for a while mm. and has done whole installations one of the reasons I wanted to show it is that sometimes people having being younger than us think you can only make pom-poms on plastic makers and what Crystal was doing and what Tracy's instructions are for is just to cut it out of any mm. kind of recycled card use two circles well Go to the website, find the Join In From Home program, join in with Tracy on the pull down menu and all of the instructions mm. are there. Now, the other thing that the Art Club were doing this week, along with indeed the Dance On Screen Club and the Outdoor Arts Group, is we have just launched our new Join In From Home pro project, the Kitchen Carnival. And the Kitchen Carnival gives everybody an opportunity to join in with Carnival at Home, wherever you are, under the leadership of Clary Salandy from Mahogany Carnival Arts, who is one of the best carnival designers in the world. Mm -hmm. And what we're focusing on now is the mass carnival traditions of Trinidad and Tobago. And we're looking at one mass character in particular, which given the pandemic and COVID-19 is the bat character. So we have, we're running extra sessions through July and August on a Wednesday afternoon on Zoom from 2.30 to 3.30. Anybody who's interested in being part of our carnival group, drop us a line, info at together2012.org.uk. But you can simply join in from home. In fact, you can find us very quickly. You can find us on the Join In From Home pull down menu, but you can also just type into your browser kitchencarnival.org and up it will come. So just to show you at the beginning, we've got some instructions for Kitchen Carnival percussion instruments and we've got some instructions for bat costumes. So this first video is a video that's from the website and it's showing you how you can so easily make a carnival percussion instrument. The Kitchen Carnival. Make your own gyro. Gyros were invented by the Taino people in the Caribbean. To make the Kitchen Carnival gyro you need an empty plastic bottle with ridges on it, like a water or squash bottle, an old wooden spoon or similar kitchen utensil, felt tip pens if you want to decorate it, and a kitchen sponge or scourer. First wash the bottle and get as much of the label off as possible. Leave the bottle top off so the sound can come out of the bottleneck. Rub the wooden spoon with the scratchy side of the sponge to smooth it down. Decorate your bottle and spoon with felt tip pens if you want to, but always keep a window or door open if you're using felt tips. Hold your bottle in one hand by the neck and your spoon in the other by the bowl and play your guiro by scraping along the ridges. You can also hit it to make a different sound. So that is our kitchen carnival guiro. We've also got instructions to make a kitchen carnival shaker and kitchen carnival percussion pan drums. But one of the most interesting things we're doing, of course, is dressing, well, exploring bat characters, dressing up in bat costumes and taking bat selfies and making up bat dances. And everything you need to do that is in your kitchen, in your bin, in your recycling bin. So, well, I'm going to let Stera 
who usually presents at Join In With Stara Slot. Stara is taking part in the Kitchen Carnival. And this is Stara having a go at making one of the masks. And Stara also came to the workshop and made some wonderful wings on Wednesday. So this is Stara starting her Kitchen Carnival journey. And I'm delighted to say that Stara is also with Hannah being able to film some bats in the wood where they're shielding. So we're going to have some real bats in our final film, which is going to be part of Hackney Carnival online in September. Hi, I'm Stara. And this is Mallow, the dog. I made a bat, a bat mask. It was good. I'm making a bat dance for the carnival. So there you go. And Stara's outfit was made from or can be made from simply the inside of a kitchen roll plus one bin liner. Mm -hmm. And that's the bat costume or one of the bat costumes. So thank you for that, Stara. All of the instructions and the videos are on kitchencarnival.org, which you can also find under the join in from home menu. But now it's time to move on to our weekly Clockwork Paralympics, which I think are taking on even more significance as it appears we will have a kind of Paralympics coming up in August, just one with no spectators and, um, and a whole host of very unusual problems. I don't know if you want to say anything about that, Robin, as our resident Paralympic champion. I, I think what's what's still fabulous is the fact that the competition there is going to be competition um you know because people athletes and and the families um and their coaches have put so much work into being ready for a second time in just over 12 months really um you know and it's such a shame that there's not going to be the kind of spectator um experience because it really mm -hmm. does help your performance um but everyone will be in the same boat. So at least, um, you know, hopefully they'll cheer each other on and maybe there'll be more of a um, three line whip about like, if you're not competing, go and watch someone that is from the rest of the mm -hmm. team. Um, but it, it, you know, it's, it's, it's still exciting and uh, there's lots of stuff coming out all the time about the final selections, who's been picked for what sports and stuff. So there's lots of things going on. Well, in the meantime, and of course, we will be supporting our Paralympians the best we possibly can from the UK. But in the meantime, in our Clockwork Paralympics, we have a sprint between new competitors, the Clockwork Meerkats. If you want to join in from home or indeed from the West Midlands, would you rather have the competitor on the right or left side of the screen? OK, well, just to I'm going to introduce our Teddy first. So this is the football bear. Um, 
on the uh, originally from the Korean um, 20, 2002 World Cup, actually. Uh, um, but he's here to support the uh, Birmingham Commonwealth efforts as well as uh, joining the rest of the England supporters. So this is the turkey bear because I couldn't find the English one. Um, Wonderful. And I've got our bear, Tanny, named after Tanny Gray Thompson, which is a honey-coloured bear in sports gear, carrying a rainbow flag, because after all, it may not be Pride Month, but it's Disability Pride Month. And fortunately, Tanny has her own gold medals already, because our bears are going to compete to see who can wear a medal for the next week. Without further ado, I'm going to pop this on and you can tell us who wins, Robin. OK, and we'll before it starts, we will pick the competitor on the right of the screen. So we are back on the uh, landing strip. Oh, this is incredible. Look at them go. Wow, amazing. Well, they really are like meerkats. And thankfully, I said the right one, the, the competitor on the right hand of the screen in time to be the winning team only. Those incredible meerkats from representing Birmingham. I think we, we might need to, if you can rerun that, just to verify the result. Well, in fact, the video should have ended with me picking one up. But no, I'm happy for you to take the win because I think it's probably time to move on. But again, if you're not sure who won or you're not sure which side of the screen you were, all of that will be on the highlights and links page. And Tani has her own medals, so she's not too bothered. Mm -hmm. And which medal is yours wearing this week? Um, I, I think we've, we, we've another, it is another of the World Championship medals. I won't keep, it, it glares, doesn't it? So I'm going to not have it directly in the light, but uh, well done, Turkey Bear. Well done, Turkey Bear, and make sure you're cheering on the Euros as well. So we're going to move on and have a look at what's coming up over the week ahead. And one of the things, of course, is we can always look back at all of the content that is already online. So there's lots on our website, including the Join In From Home programme, but there's also lots on our sister organisation, Disability Arts Online's website. And now we have Dean to tell Tell us what the highlights are from the last month. This month on Dow. Artwork in the Dolge collection and Colin talks to three artists from the collective. Aren't these portraits just magical? Saturn Returns is the title for a poetry book by artist Sunny Noachakru. James Lake blogs with drawings of initial ideas for a sculpture of his son titled Youth. Poet Cooley Coley shares her thoughts on the social model of disability. Artist Michelle Baharier paints some of the activists who have been key influences for her and one of them I had the uh, pleasure of getting to know once as well. Her name was Catherine Arignello who sadly passed away a few years ago. And remember, check out our newsletter and website. Peace out, everyone. Thank you for that, Dean. That was great. So what do you recommend that we do online over the week ahead, Robin? Um, I think it's the inevitable um, promotion of the fact that England are playing in a European trophy final for the first time since they won the World Cup in 1966. Um, 
with a, with a, a really really good team a team that is made up of people who work as a team and know how to play together work to each other's strengths and it's it's a real i think it's a real eye opener the way that it's been done i won't labor the point but it is on bbc one and itv and the kickoff is eight o'clock um looking at the forecast it looks like it's going to be a thunder and lightning evening actually i don't know if that will work in our favor against the italians who are used to playing in or more used to playing in the sun i should say <laughs> um and, and of course it will start um much earlier than that there'll be hours of people talking about it um and of course it will be across radio five live sport and probably many many other places as well Okie doke, and I'll come back to you for some recommendations if people are watching the show after the weekend. Julie, which day is that, Robin? Sunday. <laughs> it is. So what, recommend, what do you want to recommend <laughs> first, Julie? Sorry, I wasn't sure if it was tomorrow, I'll be honest with you. So it was a genuine question. Um, Wimbledon is, uh, is on. The men's singles, the uh, women's singles, the wheelchair uh, finals, mm. uh, doubles and singles, men's and women's uh, and mixed. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to a weekend of sport as well. Okay, so I'm going to come back to you in a minute. Tracy, what would you recommend apart um, from the Mighty Ducks? Well, yeah, definitely the Mighty Ducks. Cause I've got to get behind them. Um, but also, um, this year is the uh, year that... The city of culture for this year is Coventry, uh, which isn't 100 miles away from us. Um, and they did all of their uh, promotional stuff online. And there's some absolutely amazing shows and poets and music. And I think it's, it's well worth taking a look. And it's still all online. Um, the link will be on our, our pages later. Um, but yeah, that, I think that is uh, well worth a good look. And you could look at that throughout the week. Actually, there's so much to look at. Okie doke. So I'm going to come up with my first one now. And that's an event on Monday. It's from half past six to half past eight in the evening with a donation if you can afford it. And it's called Working Class Girls on Screen, Gender, Class and Stereotyping in British Film. We run the annual Together International Disability Film Festival and we talk a lot about representation of disability, mm -hmm. but we haven't really talked about class, stereotyping or gender. It looks really, really interesting and Shelby Cook, who is leading it is so you know certainly really knows her stuff so that's a monday evening and there'll be a booking link in the highlights and links page so robin what else would you recommend uh, my second recommendation is from a website that is not one i thought i would be looking at which is called country and town house um the link is in there um but actually what it what it's promoting is it it's got a link to a host of online art exhibitions and i had a good look through them this morning and there's some really really fascinating uh, uh collections from classic um still life photography right through to mushrooms everything you could think about mushrooms whether they whether they've been turned given arms and eyes and turned into some kind of creature or used to spell out words uh, through to um, a really, really vivid collection of, of pictures, um, which, which basically are a society inhabited by lobsters called Lobsteropolis. Mm -hmm. And Oh, no, I, do you know, I think we promoted an exhibition like that with robots last year, which was taking place in a completely empty gallery in lockdown one. But I need to move on. So, Julie, what else do you have for us? What else would you recommend over the week? There's a virtual walking tour of Venice, which tickled me a little bit because hmm. I think of Venice with gondolas. <laughs> But clearly, there's there's St Mark's Square, and and there's an awful lot going on in the in the little back streets behind the square. And I thought, in honour of Italy, um, I am a quarter Italian. <laughs> I just mentioned that. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm an eighth, so I think we're kind of hedging our bets on Sunday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we might become very very Italian, but we're hoping to be entirely English. Yeah. So it's it's a lovely virtual tour. 
I, and, um, you know, I'm looking forward to that, actually. And do you have anything else for us in the West Midlands? No. Mm -hmm. In that case, I am just going to pick up one more, which is next Thursday from 7 to 10. And it actually runs through from Sunday to the Sunday, but I think that's because it's still staying on the stream. And it's a virtual reality storytelling workshop with somebody called Liz Rosenthal, who runs the virtual reality arm of the Venice Biennale. So really knows her stuff. It's completely free. And it just sounds really interesting. I don't know anything about virtual reality storytelling. So I thought I would check it out. But now it is time for our and finally spot. So we have an interview that Robin recorded earlier, which is going to introduce in a minute. And while that's playing, Robin is going to get ready to send us out with a live version of his new song, celebrating the Euros and England called Electricity. So I think, Julie, you and I might as well say goodbye to everybody. Thank you for watching. We'll look forward to seeing you next week. Over to you for some introductions, Robin. And then if you two, well, if Tracy wants yeah. to say goodbye, then I'll put the video on. Bye. Have a good week. Okay, and uh, this uh, the interview says it all. It's with a gentleman called Trevor Kruger who is launching a new radio station. This afternoon, I am talking with Trevor Kruger, founder of Equal Ability Radio, um, with a fantastic new initiative. Um, and I'm just going to say, Trevor, tell us all about it. Well, thanks, Robin. I'd, I'd love to. Have we got a couple of days? Because that's probably how much I'll need. <laughs> it's um, it's very exciting. It's a lot of fun. And I hope it's going to be a great help to a, a lot of people all around the world, really. Equilibrity Radio is exactly what it says. Uh, it's about giving people an opportunity uh, on an equal footing with everybody else. And uh, essentially, we're looking at people listening to be either with a disability or a disadvantage. And we hope to become their sort of united platform, if you like, to get to uh, say what they want to say. And uh, we hope to have a, a mixed team of presenters, of able-bodied and people with disabilities of all natures as well, and reach that sort of audience. But very much um, the point is, is to integrate people more and to get people to accept that people with a disability are just the same as everybody else. Uh, and radio is a great way of doing that because, of course, they can't see you. And it doesn't allow people to form an opinion before they've done anything else. And uh, I can tell you a story about how I was inspired to set it up purely on that basis. Oh, please do. Well, I, I used to be a presenter on a station called Saint FM down in Malden in Essex and uh, a very nice little station. Didn't really see anybody very often. We did, went in, did our bit, came away. And they had a, a morning presenter, did the breakfast show, and he was brilliant. He was light. He was funny. He was articulate. Just a great guy and really enjoyed listening. But he had a lady on the show who helped him. And I had to ring in and say, why is this woman on the programme? Because she's not very good, to say it politely. She was dreadful, actually. And um, she did the sort of uh, traffic reports for him. And she'd say, oh, you know, the traffic this morning is, oh, it's, don't go down that way. It's terrible. And she was really spoiling the show. And so I said, why is she there? Anyway, they explained, well, that's his mother. And she drives him in every day to work. So I said, oh, OK, fair enough. Um, they said, you, you know about Ben? I said, well, not really. It's just great. You know, she said, no, well, Ben is completely blind and suffers with autism. And I said, really? I had no idea. And I was so impressed because he used the same studio as me. And everybody struggles in the studio from time to time. You can't get the jingles to work or the things aren't loaded correctly or nothing's primed or whatever. Something goes wrong. Um, and he would run the whole show. And all he had extra to help him was a speaking clock, which he could occasionally tap to get an update on the time. But he did everything from memory, from intuition and just talent. So in terms of, of running a radio show, then, mm -hmm. and obviously there are kind of two halves to a radio show. So for those that don't know how a radio show works, you have your presenters mm -hmm. and then you've got your production team. So right. are you hoping to staff both sides of the equation um, with disabled people? Yeah, well, we would do, absolutely, because I think that, um, you know, the thing we have to be honest about is that there are, as we know, there are lots of little sort of local run um, stations that use people with disabilities, usually with autism or Down syndrome, because they seem to be more vocal and able to work. Um, but they're very much a case of um, occupational therapy. 
And that's really not what we want to do, because that's being done very well anyway by a lot of organisations around the country. And they do it very well and they have a lot of fun and it's a great thing. We're trying to be the radio too. Um, of, uh, of of the platform, if you like, and basically say that here's an opportunity to learn more about people with disabilities and understand why they're just the same as everybody else and why we can all work together and we all, we, we've all got always got something to offer. Um, so we hope that people, for example, from, from my own experience, that's all I can speak, um, the people I've met with autism are fantastically organized they've got great memories they're methodical in the way they do things they're quite obsessed with certain subjects and I that's a great quality to have when you're putting a show together um, and I could really benefit from that others will be less sort of confident about speaking on the microphone um, so we'll put, put put people in the right places basically some people will be good back backroom staff others will be good at front line and the presentation but what we don't want to be, and I'm going to say this very honestly, we don't want to be um, a pity party. We don't want people to be say, oh, poor guy, poor lady, whatever. We want people to think, this guy's really great. I, this is, I've learned so much today from listening to this program. Right? It was really funny or I enjoyed it. It was a great drama or whatever it is we put together. And that they don't even think about who's actually at the other end of the phone. And they'll only see it when they go to the website and they're introduced to the presenters. But we hope to get known by all the charities, all the organisations who really want to see much more input into giving people opportunities where they're deserved, you know, and we think we can do a lot to do that. And of course, you say about having a team of production people, well, that's a luxury. I wish I had that. Um, we all do. I mean, the people on our shows now, I think we've got about 12 or 14 presenters all together and they all self-produce. They usually work from home on their computers uh, much as we're doing now and uh, they put their programs together i edit the ends i top and tail them as i call it i put the intros on and the outros on um, and they work very well from home and people can do that they don't even have to come into a studio so we're hoping to get um, a whole range of people working with us from all around the world because we reached 208 countries already just with our test broadcasts Mm. And, um, you know, we get people listening in, um, it, well, everywhere, you know, New Guinea and Australia, America, all over the place. Um, and we want them to be sending us information about what it's like to be um, with a disability in another country. And again. So what kind of programming do you anticipate scheduling? OK, um, well, at the moment, we're putting out mainly music because we want people to keep listening. Yeah, so they get to know more about it. And then we drop our messages in between the programmes and the shows saying who we are and uh, what we're about and all that sort of thing. So we keep people listening. We don't want them to turn off. But of course, once we're going out live and we have a schedule, then people will listen at set times of the day for the programmes they like. So we'll do a lot more than music. And we've got all sorts of things planned. We've got drama series planned, you know, radio soaps. We want to do much more news. We want to do much more biography type programmes. We want to do uh, everything, really, you know, um, we're talking about individuals like yourself, people who've made achievements in life, done great things, uh, overcome adversity or whatever, and uh, and just generally make it a whole magazine program um something for everybody that's that's really what we're all about i've had a, a, a real difficulty in recruiting people with disabilities to get involved uh, and i'm not sure why that is we've get we get a lot of people who've had um you know we have one guy for example who's uh, schizophrenic very clever guy but uh, and very articulate great knowledge of music a great person to have on radio we have people who have problems with eating disorders anxiety all those sorts of things which are all fine on radio you know i i need people around me who will educate me because this is a learning process for all of us as to you know how not to be patronizing or condescending or or say things inadvertently that you don't mean to say um you know you need to be I need to learn. We all need to learn how to go about that the right way. Um, so it's very important that we work as a team and the team put together something that's acceptable for everyone. So if somebody were interested in becoming part of Equal Ability Radio, yep. um, how would they get involved? OK, depending on what they want to do. Uh, I mean, you might have people who are writers. They might like to write drama and they just want to write. If they want to send in the scripts, then we would get that um, acted out and recorded. We would handle the rest of it. They can just be a writer. Um, if somebody is a researcher or want to do news reports or whatever from from their view, that would be fantastic. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm constantly looking when I go out now, for instance, if I use the tube in London, I think, well, if I were in a wheelchair, how would I get off of this station? There's nothing here to get me up the stairs. It's ridiculous. 
but you know I, I need someone who's obviously clued up to that sort of thing and can talk about that um if they want to do a music show all they would literally have to do is record the links and they can do that at home on a decent uh, microphone and their computer, which we would sort out with them. And we would put the whole program together. So they don't really have to worry too much. If they want to broadcast live from home, we will be able to do that in due course. And they can sit there and they can literally just plug in, link up with us. They can broadcast entirely from home. And as long as they, they're happy and content with getting the timings right and the content right, then that, that's fine. Basically, we'll cut the cloth according to their capabilities i think really as ever we've run out of time yeah um, but i'm sure there will be lots of people who will be really interested in taking part thank you thank you very much if they just want to send me an email i'll get straight back to them within 24 hours brilliant we'll put the email up on the website thank you robin it's been nice talking to you in fact it's been an honor so uh this is the song electricity and hopefully uh You'll all know it it soon and you can sing along in the pub at home because you won't be going out. So you should add that. Uh, This is cool. So this is Electricity. Come on, England. The sky is blue and we all just want to be free. The birds are whistling and the flowers are busy with bees Even the summer rain Let's me be me Breathing the air Filled with electricity The lads in white and red are setting the scene Three lions are roaring God save our gracious queen We lift our heads and our hearts might just miss a beat The hands of Pickford and Sterling's incredible feet. We must unite as one. These euros must be done. Let's bask in the sun. A glories and matches one. Everybody singing in the same key. Our victory will be soon filled electricity. Play it fair, play with steel, play with passion and dignity. The Henri Blaney will be England's winner's trophy. We must unite as one. The Euros must be done. Let's bask in the sun. Of glories and matches won. Everybody singing in the same key. Our victory will be soon filled electricity. Play it fair, play with steel, play with passion and dignity. The Henri Delaunay will become England's winner's trophy. The Henri Delaunay will become England's winner's trophy. The Henri Delaunay will become 
England's winners' trophy. Come on, England.